Half a day. Thank you all for being here. Um, the Committee on Culture and Justice is now called to order. Today is Wednesday, August 15, 2018. The time is 3.06 p.m. Notices for this confirmation hearing were disseminated via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets on August 8 and on, again on August 13, 2018. The notice was also published in the Guam Daily Post on August 8, 2018. There are several agenda items for today that are staggered. Starting at 3 o'clock, we will receive testimony on the following appointments. The appointment of Stephen Guerrero as member, Guam Parole Board. The appointment of Simeon Palomo as Guam History Representative, COSAS Board. The appointment of Fanai Castro as Performing Arts Member, Council on the Arts and Humanities Agency, CAHA Board. The appointment of Francis J. Guerrero as Member, Council on the Arts and Humanities Agency, CAHA Board. At 3.30 p.m., we will receive testimony for the following appointment. The appointment of Kate Baltazar as Station Manager, Guam Telecommunications Corporation, KGTF, PBS. Starting at 4 p.m., we will receive testimony for the following appointments. The appointment of Michael Macchio as Architect Representative, Guam Historic Preservation Review Board. The appointment of Polly Eric Forbes as History Representative, Guam Historic Preservation Review Board. I'd like to thank you all again for being here. And we'll be, we will begin with the appointment of Mr. Stephen J. Guerrero as member, Guam Parole Board. I'd like to ask those who signed up to testify on behalf of Mr. Guerrero to come to the table along, and then I will call Mr. Guerrero. Or you may sit there. Um, so I'm going to read from the sign-in sheet, all right? There's John A. B. Pangilinan. Uh, will you be doing oral testimony also? Okay. Um, Tony Lamarena, director. Uh, Nora Guerrero. Mason Guerrero. Some of these are signed up in support and not to give oral testimonies, but that, that's fine. I'll just read them off. Teresita Guerrero uh, in support. Frank Lizama in support. Teresa Tayama in support. Rosanna Castro in support and also oral testimony, is that you? Thank you. Mike Kanata in support. Linda Charfris in support. Is it Zachary? Zachary Gagan in support. All right, so um, Senator Lamarena, if you could begin. Thank you, Madam Vice Speaker. Uh, my name is Tony Lamarena, Director of DOC. I come before you uh, to testify in favor of the confirmation of uh, Steve Guerrero to the parole board. The parole board is, is probably the most difficult board or commission within the government of Guam. Uh, it deals with a lot of emotion, it deals with, but it also deals with, with an individual's future. Uh, as, as an individual comes before the parole board, the parole board has the added responsibility to ensure the safety of the community, but also to ensure the future of that individual. Uh, these, these board hearings can get quite emotional, but I think it requires individuals who have a lot of compassion. I've known Steve for over 25 years. He served in various uh, and numerous civic organizations, very active with the youth baseball here on Guam. Uh, he's uh, well aware of how government functions. Uh, but most of all, he's, he's a compassionate individual. And, and as, as commission members of the parole board hear testimony and hear individuals within the community and, and people coming before the parole board asking for parole, he has to look at each individual case for its merit. Uh, has the individual been rehabilitated? Has the individual uh, shown that his time of incarceration at the Department of Corrections, has it changed them? Are they now ready and prepared to enter into the community? So I think uh, Mr. Guerrero has the the skill set, the knowledge, but most of all the compassion to be a good board member on the Guam Parole Board. And, and I tell you, anyone 
uh, that accepts this appointment, I give him, give him the full support because as I stated earlier, this is probably um, the toughest and most controversial of all, any board and commission with the government of Guam. And I, and I congratulate Mr. Guerrero for accepting and taking that challenge. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I'm really glad that you, you highlighted the, the duties of this board and it is, it is a very tough board to serve on. Um, Mr. Pangilinan. <clears throat> My name is John Pangilinan and I'm in support of uh, Stephen Guerrero as a board member of the Guam Parole uh, Board. To read my, uh, okay, sir. Okay. okay. I am currently employed with the Bureau of Budget and Management Research. I have been employed with BBMR for over 25 years, of which I was privileged uh, to, work with, to work alongside Stephen Guerrero. For most of 20 years, Stephen was my senior analyst and supervisor. As I recall, Stephen joined BBMR in the mid-late mid 70s and continued until he retired. I believe his service period is approximately 36 years. As a senior analyst and supervisor, I've learned much from Stephen. The gratifying knowledge of government service and integrity are embedded in his character. And these attributes extend to his outside interests in baseball as a community affair and his continued contribution to the community at large. Uh, his BBR, BBMR experience, which is, in, which is extensive in budgeting, legislative review, and analytical strength, will provide a comprehensive and strong review in the, parole, in the paroling of incarcerated individuals and a cornerstone, cornerstone for the Guam Parole Board. I am honored and privileged to provide my support for Stephen Guerrero as a member of the Guam Parole Board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pengelin. Ms. Castro. Thank you, Hoffaday, uh, Madam Vice Speaker. My name is Rosanna Castro, and I'm here today in support of Stephen J. Guerrero's nomination to the Parole Board. As his first cousin, I have firsthand knowledge of the core values instilled in Steve by his parents and still held dear by our family. Respect, fairness, honesty, and integrity. These are values that Stephen has maintained in all of his interactions with people. His training and many years of experience and government service to the people of Guam will be um, invaluable to the parole board. He's able to analyze and evaluate situations based on criteria and requirements. His personal and professional experiences have helped Stephen to see the bigger, broader picture. And if confirmed by this body, he can offer this perspective to the board and potential parolees as well. Decades of volunteer service to Guam Little League are a testament to his lifelong commitment to service of our youth and their families on island. Stephen has spent many hours providing leadership, support and guidance to the administration of the Guam Little League, ensuring baseball and softball fields are safe for the thousands of children over the last 20 years who have participated in Little League. He's worked tirelessly for many years to provide our youth the opportunity to participate in Little League baseball and softball, which is geared to foster character, courage, and loyalty in youth participants and adult volunteers alike. These qualities help our youth to grow into responsible community-oriented citizens and are constant reminders for our adult volunteers to model good behavior. Steve has been important in this, instrumental in this process, and I believe that he will bring that same commitment to his role as a member of the parole board. I am confident that Stephen will be able to successfully balance the need for public safety as well as working to facilitate the successful re-entry of inmates back into our community and eventual reunification with their families. He brings the right balance of, exper of experience, both professional and personal, compassion, empathy, and the desire to make Guam a better place for our families. I am confident that he will carry out his duties in a fair and impartial manner and take into consideration all of the lives impacted by an inmate's application for parole. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Castor. 
Um, before we hear from Mr. Guerrero, I'd just like to read um, what the current statute says regarding the Guam Parole Board. Only persons who by their knowledge and experience are prepared to perform efficiently the duties of the board as here and after provided shall be eligible for appointment. No person who has a family member of the first consanguinity serving a local sentence or on parole shall be eligible to serve on the board. They have different criteria for different board members. Um, and then two board members shall come from the public at large. All Guam parole board members shall be of good moral character. The powers and duties of the board include, um, they are author the board is authorized to release on parole any person confined in a, a penal or correctional institution of Guam and to revoke parole or discharge from parole any parolee as required by this statute. Procedures of the board are dictated by statute and they give the inmate a right uh, to have an application and a revocation hearing. They have the right to presence of legal counsel during the hearing. Uh, the inmate has a right to receive in writing a specific reason or reasons for denial of parole to include deficiencies to be addressed in preparation for a future parole application. I just wanted to read these out because I, I agree with, with the Senator Lamarena that this is a very um, important board, very unique in our government, but, and, and so I just want the public who's watching to also know what, what it is that you are agreeing to serve. And so, Mr. Guerrero, please proceed. Mm -hmm. Half an Madam Vice Speaker and Chairperson. Uh, before I begin, I would like to thank you and the members of the Committee of the Culture and Justice for allowing me the opportunity to, to address the committee on my confirmation hearing as a member of the Guam Parole Board. Okay. When I was first approached several months ago to serve as a member of the Guam Parole Board, my first reaction was one of honor and members of a very select group. Being key leaders and decision makers in the criminal justice system, the role of each board member has a far-reaching effect for many individuals in prison. I've spoken to individuals who work in the judicial and public safety field and, currently bo and a current board member to obtain a sense of parole as a profession and the issues and challenges faced by the board. The decision also includes the hazardous and possible difficulties that accompany the job. After much thought and consideration on all the requirements and expectations of the position, and discussion with my wife, Nora, and family, I made the decision to accept the position as a board member to the Guam Parole Board. I understand that as a parole board member, my decision is extremely important to a wide range group of individuals, such as the individual inmate, individual's family, the victim and the victim's family, law enforcement officials, and others in the community. I am also aware that every decision I make will probably, be ple will probably please some individuals and displease others. While it might be difficult to, a, to maintain one's poise when faced with the emotional charge issue surrounding a parole decision, I can assure you that all my decisions will, base, will be based on every individual's right to due process under the law. I support and will pursue any offender rehabilitation programs and truly believe offenders maybe not all, can change if given a chance. As a district administrator with the Guam Little League Program, I've had the opportunity to work with numerous parolees over the years and found many of them to be hardworking individuals striving to start their lives over again. It is my belief that some of these individuals are honest, working, honestly working to become good citizens and are ready and prepared to re-enter the community. In closing, I would like to thank you and the members of the committee for your support of my nomination to the Guam Parole Board. I'm here to answer any questions and comments you may have regarding my nomination. 
Thank you, Steve Guerrero. Thank you very much. Mr. Guerrero, um, I, I want to thank you first for accepting this nomination. And I want to th let you know that I appreciate that your years of experience in the government are, are very valuable on this board. And I think uh, you will be an efficient and fair and um, compassionate like, member, which is very needed. It's, it's, it's a unique board. And actually, there's no compensation for this board. And, and we're researching why that is. But it's been in statute exempt from any kind of compensation. And, uh, and as you've known, um, you need to balance justice for the person who's come before you uh, with victims' rights are also mandated to be um, part of what you consider. And uh, of course, as the senator said, safety for the community, right? Yeah. But yes. um, I, do you, um, think that there are any, I'm, I'm assuming that you qualify pursuant to the statute, that you have no one uh, in prison at this point or eligible for parole or on parole uh, as the statute. I am not aware of any relative close okay. family member that is All incarcerated right. at this point. Okay, just making sure. And then, um, all right, well, this is, uh, I, I just want to also let you know because uh, we did pass a, a law recently mm -hmm. because there was a controversy that, uh, so the law changed a little bit and said that if pers a person applied for parole twice in a row and was, was denied, mm -hmm. that they couldn't apply again for a period of years. And that was at, at the request of victims' families who were mm -hmm. very much demanding that because they, victims, victims and their families also come before the parole board. This is why it's a very hard role. Yes. And they advocate sometimes, and especially in these violent crimes that the person not be released on parole, right? Yes. So, yes, so I, I just want to let you know too that um, we are here to help you. And if there's anything that you see while you're serving on this board that can be, you know, um, that we can help with, please let us know. Uh, that's what I'm here for. That's what I feel like my role is as uh, in, in the legislature in regards to this board. Thank you, Madam Chair. And you know, um, I, 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 because of the parole board actually works hand in hand with the Department of Corrections, and that the Department of Corrections actually by mandate provides administrative services to the, to the board, I will definitely work hand in hand with the Director of uh, Corrections to see that the parole board runs effectively and efficiently, especially in a timely manner, because it is my belief that Although, unfortunately, the last several months have been difficult to get a quorum for the parole board, those families and victims also um, are entitled to, to some closure or some at least some direction in, 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 the, in, the, in the situation of, of, of their particular case that should, in a timely manner, come before the parole board. Yes, and you're right. And, and I've seen in my short term here... Uh, changes with the Department of Corrections and the Parole Board that I think have been great improvements. And so I want to commend the director on that and the whole department and the parole di division and um, wish you the best on this endeavor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you all for your testimony. Mr. Guerrero, for the record, we have also received written testimony from Manuel Cruz in support of your nom nomination. All right. Um, we're now going to move on to the appointment of Mr. Simeon Palomo for the Guam History Representative COSAS Board. Um, Mr. Palomo, if you could have a seat in the middle. Okay. And I'm going to call now... Um, those who have signed up to present oral testimony, Susan Dugan, Philip Sablon, Malia Ramirez, Monica Guzman, Rita Nauta, and Chris Duenas. And while there's having a seat, I'd like to read out those who are also here in support. We have Jolie Veloria Palomo, 
Jenny Antalan, Leilani Nelson, former Senator Tony Lamarena, Francis Guerrero, Dot Chargaloff, Bobby F. Jehi, Teresa Tayama, Chris Flores, I think Carmel, Carmela Pakeki. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and for signing in support of this nomination. All right, so if, if Susan, if you could begin. Buenas and half a day, Chairwoman Terlahi, the Committee on Culture and Justice. I'm sorry, if you w would mind, let me read the criteria for this board right now before you begin. Okay, That sure. way, um, yeah. Okay, so this board serves, the COSAS board serves in an advisory capacity to the Department of Chamorro Affairs Board of Trustees. And the Department of Chamorro Affairs Board of Trustees um, oversees, as you know, the museum. And so this, this board is in particular focused on the museum. And uh, so they will, um, they're going to be the one who recommends who will you know, uh, be the administrator of this museum. And we have a brand new museum, so this is very important to all of us at this point. They are supposed to ensure that the collection storage conditions conform to the guidelines and standards established. Uh, they're supposed to adopt policies for exhibitions, collections, acquisitions, collection, deaccessioning, and for merchandise sales uh, or for vendors operating under lease agreements. They're supposed to report to the Board of Trustees um, on all of these matters. They're supposed to perform general reviews and evaluations of the COSAS programs, do any and all things necessary to the full and convenient exercise of the above duties. So thank you. Okay, Ms. Dugan, please proceed. Okay, I'll start again. Buenas and half a day, uh, Madam Chairwoman Tarlahi, Committee on Ch Culture and Justice. My name is Susan Rosario Dugan, and I am here to testify in support of my former colleague, and most importantly, my good friend, Mr. Simeon P Manabusan Palomo, who is fondly known by many as either Sai, Sim, Mongi, Pari, to name a few. I strongly and firmly believe that Simeon would be a great asset to the Antonio M. Palomo Guam Museum as a board member of the COSA, COSA's board. Simeon and I go back as far as 1992 when I transferred from Child Protective Services to what is formerly known as the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse, which was housed at the original dilapidated Guam Memorial Hospital. From the get-go, Simeon and I just clicked. It wasn't only because we enjoyed laughing, making fun of ourselves, and, uh, and, uh, of ourselves or each other, or just enjoying food, though I still don't know where he puts all that food. I was so impressed with Simeon's passion and compassion to help individuals with mental illness. He worked so diligently as a program coordinator at DMHSA to ensure that the current center, the current building, now known as Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center, was built and completed so that our consumers can have a decent place to go to. Sim and I are very close friends that I feel comfortable to say that Sim and I, that Sim may look like someone who is an easy pushover, possibly a wimp at times, especially when he starts to laugh. But trust me, Simeon is the most patient, compassionate, devoted, committed, dedicated, energetic, meticulous, and conscientious individual that I know. Not only when he was working for the government, but in all aspects, even now as a happy retiree. Take the 2016 FESPAC Floral Art Committee. Simeon had been to the previous FESPAC in 2012. He loved it and wanted to make sure that Guam shined in 2016. He chaired that Floral Art Committee and had a call out for anyone who wanted to participate as a volunteer. Admittedly, I was not sold on volunteering for floral arts, mainly because I kill plants just by looking at them. But knowing how committed Simeon can be when he puts his mind to it, I gave in and joined. It was the best experience I had. Our committee had very little money, 
But everyone chipped in and did whatever it took. But none of us, none of us, can equate to all the time, effort, dedication um, that Samyam put into it, from the beginning to the end. Well, actually, Chair, Chairwoman Terlahi, we haven't really ended. We, st we still keep meeting with our Floral Art Committee reunion as recent as last week. Status, money, fame does not face Simeon in making sure that the work is done and done correctly. Simeon is such a humble person who has such great work ethics and, pos and a positive attitude in whatever task he is given. He is a hands-on person who is always giving and doesn't believe in di dictating responsibilities to others. If he can do the job, he will do it. I attribute all these great qualities for his respect for others and what he learned from his mom and dad, who I know, along with the rest of his family, are so proud of all of his accomplishments. And speaking of his dad, when we learned that the legislature did not support the passing of renaming the entire Guam Museum to the Antonio M. Palomo Guam Museum, but rather just naming a room after Mr. Palomo, it was de devastating to say the least. But thankfully, that was rectified. And now, Mr. Antonio M. Palomo's son, Simeon, is here before you to carry on what his dad and family members have been doing from 1995 to the year 2007. With great pride and love for our ancestors, culture, and history, along with his dad, Simeon and the rest of his family spent countless hours making sure that we, our children, our grandchildren, and so forth, have a place to go to, to learn about our heritage as Chamorros. In closing, I know you know Chairwoman, that Simeon is the right person to be on the CLOSIS board. It doesn't take a genius to know who can and will ensure that the Antonio M. Palomo Guam Museum will be cared for with the utmost respect, pride, and dignity that our museum deserves. Suzu Usma Asi, Madam Chairwoman Terlahi, for giving me this opportunity to show you my support for Mr. Simeon Manabus and Palomo as a CAUSES board member. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Duenas. Thank you, Madam Chair, Senator Talai, Vice Speaker. Uh, many of the uh, good remarks were already made of some of the things I was going to mention. Um, so I'm going to choose the, the name Mongi. <laughs> because that's affectionately what I know him as. Um, I know uh, Mongi and all of the Palomos, his mom is here today, um, very well. Uh, we're very close, we're actually um, uh, relatives and we grew up together in the village of Timuning. And I, I also worked closely with Senator Tony Ada when um, the bill was going to be introduced uh, to rename uh, the museum or to name the museum after Senator uh, Tony M. Palomo. And I think that is the greatest reason why Simeon, for sure, Mongi, uh, is absolutely the right person to serve on this board. He lived and saw his father and his absolute passion for Guam's history, for our people, and especially in the times when there wasn't the energy behind building that beautiful building that we have now. When he was just up at Micronesian Wall and doing everything that he could to keep it together and to ensure that the, the artifacts and everything else that we had um, were well taken care of and whatever exhibit could be presented was there. Probably not a great time in our history really as a people that we weren't faster at ensuring that we enshrine our history in a building now uh, that really is deserved of our culture, our history and our people. Uh, nonetheless, we did it, and it's there now, and we need caretakers uh, such as Mongi to move forward and to ensure the legacy of his father and many others who have gone before him as well as, as we stand on their shoulders, uh, really of giants um, who have kept our culture together. So I cannot think of a more fitting person um, 
to serve on this board and to assume the responsibility as long as, along with his other colleagues uh, to ensure um, the proper operation of our Guam Museum on the COSAS board. So with that, uh, I will end my remarks and, 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 and thank Bongi for stepping up to the plate. He doesn't like a lot of these things. I actually tried to get him to serve before <laughs> on a different board and I called him and his reaction was, no, he calls me Bobak. No, 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 Bobak, I don't want to do that. And so I'm so glad he accepted um, this appointment. And I know that he will do it with the proper due diligence and all of the dignity that it deserves. So thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to speak in favor of Mungi's uh, Thank nomination. you very much, Senator Duenas. All right, so uh, Malia, okay. Hafari, Vice Speaker, uh, Buenos and Saludo Guinea Guam. Nu estine i i postun i ponsauno Guinea Gi Commission, the quest to belong to any commission. The only really dividing factor, una semi papara, sa parewa todo i i apatu hinano, the journey of everyone is the same. Los angin pon si para ni, the binat kadada is ang ano. But it's like going to college mm -hmm. or any institution. The institution, senior escuela o yakaleo, finat nagwio ni toru itiningo. An institution can teach you all the academics that's to offer in any institution. Lo uno, there's one thing an institution cannot do, no matter where you go in the world. I know this, I went through that. And that separation, isimo papara, i dedication, uno, is dedication, then i ocho, i guinaita. You can be the very best doctor, a best lawyer, going to the best institution of law and medicine. But that institution cannot teach you dedication, or that comes from you. So, Paraguani, so for me, I know I attend Simeon, and I know Simeon, I'm much older than him. When I'm looking at all these different journeys that Simeon has done, our relationship began with the Guam Museum. And he was right next door to us. And that's when I saw Simeon's uh, passion and dedication to get this job done, irrespective of all the obstacles that were there. Lo Paraguayo, Zangin, Hinaling Itauto, Ni Chitsonia, when somebody is challenged, by that journey he has to take. The only thing that's gonna keep him going is dedication and passion. And that Simeon has. I think you've captured that very well. <laughs> Thank you, Malia. Um, sorry. Half a day, buenas, Vice Speaker. Um, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to uh, testify in support of Simeon Palomo to serve on the COSAS board. My name is Monica Guzman. I'm from uh, Mengilao. The COSAS board is a very critical part of the operations, uh, like you said earlier, setting policy for the um, management and operations of the Guam Museum. Currently, it is being operated by Galaiti Group and um, without uh, the COSAS board being in place. And I don't think anyone will question or can question Simeon's abilities, his passion, his commitment um, to serve on the board. But I think it's um, uh, very critical that all the nominees for the COSAS board, COSAS board be um, confirmed and um, so that we have the Guam Museum. It's a brand new building. It's three years old now, um, but there's all kinds of um, things to operate the, the museum. You know, right now we have the collections management program. We have um, the um, 
cultural repository that is being discussed now to um, uh, house Guam's artifacts. And these are very precious artifacts. Um, we're working now with our, con our consultant to ensure that the collections of the Guam Museum, um, it's estimated to be around 250,000 objects um, to make sure that they're housed and archived and um, listed correctly. Um, and so I think that with Simeon serving on the COSAS board, it will, um, like um, they said earlier, his commitment and his drive, he will push to make sure that, that all the things that are necessary to manage and operate the museum are there. Um, we're right now in the process of uh, working with the, um, the AAM, the, Association, the American Association of Museums, to become accredited, and the collections management uh, program is part of that accreditation process and part of the core documents necessary. Um, and also the advisory board is also a real critical part of the acc accreditation. So um, I, I'm here in support of Simeon and um, I hope that you will uh, positively confirm him to serve on the COSAS board. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, Rita, Ms. Nalta. Buenas and half a day. Madam Vice Speaker, Guahusi Rita Pangalina Nauta. I'm here in my capacity as the Managing Director of Guampedia.com. Uh, please accept my testimony supporting the appointment of Simeon Manibusin Palomo to the COSAS Advisory Board. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Simeon over the last five years in a multitude of efforts to promote and preserve Guam history and Chamorro cultural heritage through the Guam Museum and the Department of Chamorro Affairs. As a proud son of Guahan and advocate for the arts, humanities, and natural environment, I believe Simeon will commit wholeheartedly to serving in the best interest of our island, community, and the mandates of the COSAS Advisory Board. Before retiring from government service, Simeon's last several years were immersed in the planning, development, and completion of the new Guam Museum and its permanent exhibition. I saw firsthand his passion, tenacity, and humility throughout the oftentimes tenuous process of finally bringing to fruition a vision that was championed by his late father and a community of educators that began this journey more than 90 years ago. Deeply rooted in the Chamorro concepts of Enafamaulik, Inadahi, Geftau, Zengofli'i, and guided by a legacy of service and strong sense of community, the perspective and energy that Simeon will bring again to the Guam Museum, although this time in an advisory capacity, will help to ensure its success. With that said, I respectfully request your confirmation of his appointment to the COSAS Advisory Board for the Senator Antonio M. Palomo Guam Museum and Chamorro Educational Facility. Sisu Masi. Sisu Masi. Is there anyone who I didn't call who wanted to testify? All right, so Mr. Palomo, please proceed. And Mrs. Palomo, thank you for being here today. Very happy okay. to see you. Okay. Please proceed, Simi. Buenos and half day, Vice Speaker Teresa Lahi. It is an honor to come before your committee on my confirmation hearing to serve on the COSAS board. The Guam Museum has been a part of my life for many decades, now proudly known as the Senator Antonio M. Palomo Guam Museum and Educational Facility. I have fond memories of my entire family helping out the Guam Museum at its various sites at Adalu, Tizen, Chamorro Village, Guam Premier Outlet, and Micronesia Mall. We, we were supporting my father in any way we could. Despite the limited resources through the years, he and his staff produced excellent exhibitions of the Chamorro people's 3,000 plus years of history. I was privileged myself to help out the Guam Museum from 2013 to 2017 administering the operations and assisting planning groups toward the completion of the museum's permanent exhibit at Skinner Plaza. I was also a part of the Education Quality Committee and the Museum Technical and Cultural Review Committee, collaborating with experts on history and culture. During my tenure, I learned from and gained much respect for all those who provided their time and expertise. I had the privilege of collaborating with Guampedia, Guam Preservation Trust, University of Guam, 
National Park Service, Department of Parks and Recreation, Guam Community College, Guam Museum Foundation, as well as other agencies and many individual experts. In addition to my participation in these planning groups, I ensure that our small operation of dedicated employees at the Guam Museum engaged in community outreach as part of our mission. To name a few, we had exhibitions at Ladia Freedom, we had exhibitions on the pelagic fishing, we had one on Cap Rojas, we had one titled Friends of the Museum, we actually exhibited um, items from like artists Raph and Pinko and navigator Rob Lintianco. We had an exhibition at the Chamorro Village. It was in, in uh, commemoration of the Kaha Masters Program. So we actually exhibited like the, um, some items from the Suruhanos and Mestizas and all that just to um, celebrate the Kaha's program. We had an exhibit at the Outrigger Guam Beach Resort uh, in commemoration of Mess Chamorro and in anticipation of FESPAC. So we actually had an exhibit on navigation again, um, we, uh, and including um, some items from Phil Sablon. And uh, we also had an ex exhibition at um, Phoenix, the Phoenix Center in collaboration with the Tourism Education Council. And we even had an exhibit at the Guam Micronesia Island Fair uh, on the textiles of Micronesia. We even had a virtual exhibit of 1876 Guam on Facebook, the earliest known photographs of the island from Gustav Reimer, who toured the island as a paymaster of the German ship, the SMS Hertha. Quite frankly, I have to say that I enjoyed creating exhibits with the museum staff and collaborating with community partners more than my administrative duties. The spirit of Anafa Malik has always been my guiding force in my work and in my personal endeavors most especially when promoting our culture and island. An example of this is when I participated in the 2012 and 2016 Festival of Pacific Arts, known as FESPAC. At the 2012 FESPAC in the Solomon Islands, I was a delegate for both the literary and floral arts disciplines. We worked day and night under the leadership of Senor Peter Onodera to represent Guam the best way we could, from telling stories of Guam at various venues staging the play Tetanen, promoting Chamorro literature, presenting Chamorro fashion, promoting Chamorro film at the National Theater, to my sole participation in floral art and photography programs. At the 2016 FESPAC in Guam, I was honored to work with a group of dedicated, sorry, volunteers and government agencies to host 25 floral artists from 20 Pacific Island nations. We coordinated over 90 floral art demonstrations held at the FESPAC hut, at six senior centers, and the Outrigger Guam Beach Resort. All of these accomplishments through the years serves as a testament to the effectiveness of organizing and planning with the spirit of Anafa Malik, collaborating with others for the best interests of our community. I am humbled to be considered to serve the Guam Museum in an advisory capacity, and I respectfully request your confirmation of my appointment to the COSAS board. I will continue to serve in the spirit of Anafa Malik in whatever I am tasked to do for the Senator Antonio M. Palomo Guam Museum and Educational Facility. Sisos Masi. Sisos Masi, Simeon. Thank you again for accepting this nomination. Um, I, you are held in high esteem by people who I hold in very high esteem also. So, and uh, I am very honored that to hold this confirmation hearing for you. I, Thank you. I met Simeon not with, by his involvement with the museum, but with his involvement, he was testifying and I was testifying and at a, it was on an EIS uh, oh. environmental impact study and his testimony was so impressive to me, I had to go meet this guy. So I made a point to find, track him down after that and make sure I meet him. And we've been friends ever since because I just very much respect your work in this community. And, and I respect the work that you've done as, as an employee at the Guam Museum. And uh, this role's different. Now you're a board member, now you're, you're the big picture man, right? And you're the advisor and you're gonna have to stand up to directors who might be coming, changing, right? 
and, and employees, everything. It's a, it's a different role. We've got a management contract going on right now with the museum. You're going to have to, you know, be objective handling that. And, yeah. of course, you've been involved on every level, even on the, the design and what's going to go in there. So I know that uh, I agree with Malia, and I'm glad that was stated very clearly. You stand out for your dedication and love. And Sizu yeah. Masi. Sizu Masi. So thank you all for your testimony today, and um, we will continue to accept written testimony before the end of August. Thank you so much. We'll now move on to the appointment of Fanai Castro as Performing Arts Member of the Council on Arts and Humanities Agency, CAHA, and the appointment of Francis J. Guerrero as Member of the Council on Arts and Humanities Agency, CAHA. We could have, um, so Ms. Castro's here, Joey, and Mr. Guerrero, if you could please join us. And Ms. Kusuman. Okay, so before we hear from the nominees, we're going to hear from Joseph Certeza, who's a current member of the CAHA board, and Ms. Monica Guzman. So, Mr. Certeza, please begin. We're going to hear from them after. Yes. Oh, sorry, let me begin with this. Um, so, the governing board of, of CAHA. Um, again has members with different backgrounds, different qualifications, and just one second. So Ms. Ms. Castro is nominated as the Performing Arts Member of CAHA, and Mr. Guerrero is nominated as a general member of CAHA, and he's the former uh, chairperson, or current, former, current. All right, and um, just one second. While serving in an office, no member of the governing board or any of its committees, panels, or advisory groups shall be eligible to receive a grant, loan, or other form of assistance from CAHA. And we know that CAHA gives artists these grants, and uh, you, you, you all are artists, so I know that it's something you have to sacrifice to serve on this board. They meet um, at least monthly, more often if necessary, and uh, they are in need of a quorum, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, there is compensation for this board, $50 per meeting. Um, they canceled it. I think on the current budget, we, we put it to be um, up to the agency, whether they can afford to pay it or not. It's kind of like optional. Um, the board is responsible for the budget of CAHA, so you, you are in charge, right? And the employees, uh, they are supposed to answer to you, including the director. And uh, you are authorized to appoint committees, panels, commissions, and furtherance of your duties. Um, you are responsible to apply for, receive, and disperse funds from the National Endowment for the Arts and Humanities on behalf of Guam, to apply for and accept and expend any gifts, donations, or requests uh, on behalf of Guam also for the arts. All right, so thank you. So Mr. Citeza, please begin. Off today, Madam Chair, and thank you very much for allowing me to be here and speak in support and the confirmation for Fanai Castro and Francis Guerrero. But um, I'd like to talk about Fanai Castro at the moment. 
Um, my relationship with Fanai Castro was first as a fellow artisan of Sagan Couture de Chamorro, and more so as a fellow artisan working on numerous murals with the youth, which we have completed more than five murals together, doing workshops, teaching kids how to paint, and through that process, they're really learning about Chamorro culture and identity. Um, and all of these murals was intended to serve and perpetuate who we are and where we come from. Ms. Castro also was a fellow co-worker uh, at Academy of Our Lady of Guam, where she was a Guam history teacher and I was the art teacher in 2014 to 2015, which collaboratively with other teachers, we brought forth Chamorro culture to be more prevalent throughout the campus and within the students' bodies' mindsets. Ms. Castro has also been a valued member of the 20, 2016 Fe Festival of Pacific Arts fashion team, which collaboratively, collab collaboratively we have organized three fashion shows, accommodated close to 20 island nations, and made, an, one of, made this experience one of the most memorable for everyone within several months of planning. For an Castle has been a, a crucial um, person in my mind and in my heart as a fellow artisan as someone, and as someone who is there for our Chamorro culture and our youth. Um, if it wasn't for Fanai Castro, um, I really wouldn't have the conscience of the Chamorro culture and being proud of who I am today. Um, yeah, if it wasn't for Ms. Castro. So I do humbly support her confirmation for the Kaha and the Arts and Humanities um, board member. And with Ms. Castro there, I know and I'm confidently sure that we can do many great things within, with our artists. So yes, that's my testimony for Fanai Castro. Thank you very much. Yes, if do you have test you, you signed up also to testify? Yes. I Burr? also yes, Madam Chair, I have also signed up to testify on behalf of the confirmation for Francis Guerrero. Um, serving as a board member with Francis Guerrero has been most motivating and most inspirational for me. Um, Francis Guerrero has been a board member who I actually look up to ever since the first day going to the board meetings and meeting and just being just disgusting, um, Kaha and all its issues and what we need to do. With Francis Guerrero, uh, I really left every meeting feeling more inspired with the most morale and feels like I can do whatever it takes to support the arts. Um, if it wasn't for Francis Guerrero, uh, we wouldn't be moving forward and aggressively with the 1% of the arts rules and regs. Um, I feel like with his determination, I know we can get where we need to go. Um, without Francis Guerrero, I feel that um, we wouldn't really have a good idea of how to make the arts a part of our economic makeup. I feel with Francis Guerrero present and his experience, we can push the arts to be valued a part of Guam's economy. Um, so I really humbly ask the reconfirmation of Francis Guerrero to our Kaha board, and I would be glad and more excited to be working with him right now um, for the arts. So, yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Shiteza. Sokara? Hafadeh, good afternoon, uh, Vice Speaker, and I'm here in support of Fanai Castro to serve as a member of the Guam Council of Arts and Humanities Board of Trustees and also to support um, Francis Guerrero's nomination on the same board. Um, like you, when you first met Simeon, I first met Fanai at an EIS meeting down at Southern High School and I was very, very impressed with her passion. And I believe that her passion for the arts for our culture will catapult her in her leadership as a member of the board of trustees, a uh, board of directors for, for uh, CAHA. Right now the CAHA board has four members and with the confirmation of Francis and Fanai, that'll bring it up to six, I believe it's an 11 member board. Um, and I, I am just happy to see um, Fanai as a practicing artist and Joey as a practicing artist, and then of course with Master 
master blacksmith um, Fra uh, Frank Lizama to see practitioners of our arts and unculture um, provide that perspective to the Board of Trustees. Um, with Francis Guerrero, I, can I just do both at the same time? Okay, with Francis Guerrero, I've known Francis for many years, and I've had the honor of working closely with him over the last 10 years on various nonprofit organizations. His heart and passion is in the arts and culture of Guam. He has served as a volunteer on many cultural nonprofits. We work together um, to create a cultural entrepreneur and incubator program under GUMA, the Guam Unique Merchandise and Art. And I'm happy to say that both um, uh, Joey Certeza in, and his company, Tao Designs, and of course, uh, Master Blacksmith Frank Lizama and Lizama's Forge are uh, beneficiaries of uh, GUMA grants, along with 15 other uh, local artisans. And we had over 200 artists actually attend our training program. Um, so we started the program together, Francis and I. And then as a musician, Francis, along with his sisters, have graced us through their years with their beautiful medleys and most recently performed in the Sentimental Journey concert, honoring and paying homage to our World War II survivors. He continues providing free voice lessons to the Mount Carmel Phoenix Stage Band and is lead to the Maina Church Choir, as if he doesn't have enough time. He, he uh, continues to exhibit his passion for, for music. He has taken his experience and his expertise in the business world, mainly his work in the retail industry, to assist many of our artisans by providing free counsel in the areas of merchandising, pricing, marketing, uh, packaging, and visual merchandising. Francis will be an asset to or any organization, whether it's GUMA, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, the Guam Museum Foundation, PIPIT, Guam Visitors Bureau, Tourism Education Council. I think that's just to name a few of the, the many organizations he served. Once he makes a commitment to serve on the organization, he is there 150%. As the former CAHA chair, I know that his engagement with the agency will be a seamless transition. His familiarity with balance sheets and income statements, I'm sure will be an asset to the agency and to the board, especially in, this challenging, uh, in these challenging fiscal times. I know that Francis's commitment to the arts and culture of our island is all because of his love for our island and our people. It is my honor to support Francis Guerrero and Fanai Castro as members of the Board of Directors for the Guam Council of Arts and Humanities. I also wanted to add that I sit as a board member for the National Association of State Arts Agencies. And that is the overseeing organization of all the 56 state arts agencies uh, and, and jurisdictions. And we just recently had a visit to Guam and the Pacific by um, the executive director of NASA. And um, she was totally amazed and totally impressed with the state of art and culture in Guam. And she was uh, most impressed with the direct access that CAHA has with our artists and our cultural practitioners. Whereas in the States, it's like two or three levels removed from the state arts agency to the actual artists. Here, the great staff at CAHA work directly with our artists. The board works directly with our artists and with our, our arts organizations. And I, so I think that's a real benefit to preserving and perpetuating and um, raising the level of arts on Guam. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. And I know you're a former CAHA member or chairperson also, so I, I, I value your input today. Thank you very much. And, and thank you, Mr. Certeza. And, and I do appreciate that there are going to, the artist perspective is going to be very well representative. And uh, did you want to testify on these nominations, Ms. Senator? Uh, thank you, Vice Speaker. I just wanted to testify in favor of both nominees. I know Francis, I don't know Fanai, but uh, I do have a history with Kaha. I, I was director from 87, 1987 to 1994. Uh, I remember uh, 
Bif Lazama was an apprentice at that time before he was a master, uh, working with uh, Tunjak Lohan, the late uh, Tunjak. And uh, I remember hiring Jackie, who has moved up in the department, and uh, congratulations to her. Uh, so I have uh, quite a bit of history with, uh, with Kaha. Um, you know, I congratulate the two nominees, and uh, I, I support their confirmation. Uh, Kaha has always been near and dear to my heart. As a matter of fact, uh, this week at DOC, we're working collaboratively with Kaha, and we have Mr. Robert Taitano conducting uh, wood carving classes at DOC. So again, you know, our, our working relationships continues with Kaha, and we want to thank them, and we appreciate all the work that they do. But the, the, the promotion of the arts and culture uh, is, is truly a very important part of life. You know, people forget that, uh, you know, arts plays a major role in what we do every day. Uh, art always seems to take a back stage to life. But if you really look at it, from the moment we wake up to the minute we go to sleep, we all get involved in the arts. The first thing we do in the morning is turn on the radio, listen to the music. That's art. We read the newspaper. Who put the newspaper together? A graphic artist. We go to eat lunch at a restaurant. We open the menu. Who designed the menu? We go, wa go home after work and watch TV. Well, the actors and actresses and directors are all artists. So from the minute we wake up to the moment we go to sleep, we all are involved in the arts. And we, we always forget the importance of the arts. And I hope that uh, these individuals who serve on the board will continue the perpetuation of the arts on Guam. And it, it's not necessarily just cultural arts, but all the arts. Uh, the National Endowment of the Arts encourages not just the Samoa art, but, but all the arts on Guam. Uh, and so, you know, I, I hope that, you know, we send a message also to our lawmakers the importance of the arts, and, and I encourage uh, the continuance of the arts on Guam. Thank you, Manager. Thank you very much, Senator Lamarena. Uh, Fanai, we will hear from you now, if you would like to say a few words. Good afternoon, Vice Speaker and Madam Chair. Uh, I'm here to introduce myself to the committee. My name is Fanai Castro. Um, I have been an artist for most of my life, and I have been an educator for a little over 10 years. Um, I have worked extensively amongst our island community and with uh, members of our diaspora. Uh, when, I, when I was asked to become a board member of Kaha, I was quite surprised as others have testified, um, especially in the realm of performing arts. Performing arts is a very, very big um, part of our arts community. And stepping into that position uh, makes me realize that it's a very, very great responsibility. And I, I can't um, say that I would be the best in that area as my performing arts experience is you know, not as great as many other members of our community, but I can guarantee that I will give my best as a member of this board, San Masi. Thank you very much, Fanai. I, I know you also uh, for your work in the community, and I want to thank you for that. And I, I do expect that you'll be a very fair member of the board, and um, whatever work that Kaha is doing, I, I expect that you will be successful in ensuring that all the artists can participate if possible and that they know about these things and, and that you will make your voice heard when it comes to the policy that the board is setting for those types of things. And so I, I want to thank you for your accepting this nomination. It is a big responsibility, like you said, it's going to require your time and, and effort and, and thinking, you know, um, in a, in a, in a big, big picture way for all of the artists of Guam and for all of Guam. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you very much. Mr. Guerrero. 
Hafadeh Vice Speaker, Hafadeh. Madam Chair. Uh, I am Francis Guerrero, and I am here simply put because I am ready to jump back in and work hard to perpetuate and further the objectives of Kaha and what it means to the people of Guam. I think having served previously and also serving as chair at one point uh, from late 2015 through March of 2018, I have learned very well the mechanics of Kaha and its uh, organization, all of its responsibilities and the programs that it does oversee to help promote uh, as Tony put it, not just the cultural arts, but all arts and humanities uh, on the island. Um, so I know there's a lot of responsibility behind it. Uh, I have been very instrumental in trying to push the Percent for the Arts uh, program further because that in itself is a big funding source outside of what the government of Guam's budget can provide. I think, I think it's critical that we nail that right. Uh, it would help so many artists out here to uh, both promote themselves and further their dreams and uh, expose their talents. I think, uh, as Monica shared, the work that I've done with Guam Unique Merchandise and Art, uh, the GUMA program, has been significant in that many of these artisans dreamed of taking their art and making it into something that is both uh, contributing to their uh, personal economy as well as the economy of Guam. Uh, many of them have come uh, out of the program, very, very successful, a different mindset totally from when they walked in. And these are things that uh, all of the artisans, uh, whether they're performing arts, uh, cultural producers, uh, and just any arts here in Guam, need to be even more exposed to. Um, as Monica put it, the uh, state art assembly, the assembly of its state art agencies is very much focused on driving arts across the 56 uh, designated membership states and territories as a con uh, contributor of economic growth. So it is something that Guam, I think, is headed in the right direction, but still needs to push even further. And that is my biggest focus in wanting to serve again on the CAHA board. Uh, so I'm here to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gurr. I want to recognize you too for your work in the community in, in many different areas and thank you for that. And uh, thank you for inspiring our, our other board members. I, I appreciate that. I, I've, that's the first time I've been for a confirmation hearing where I heard a board member say they were inspired by someone else on the board. So thank you. That's fantastic. And this is some area that we could use inspiration, so please keep it up. And thank you again for serving as chairperson for those years. And um, um, so I'm going to conclude this hearing. Oh, oh, we have also received written testimony from the Kaha Deputy Director, Joyce Bamba, in support of both of your nominations. So I want to wish you the best. And if there's anything, I know we're going to work on the, the percentage of the arts um, program. But if there's anything else that I can help you with, please don't hesitate to let me know so we can help you move faster if, if I can. All right. And thank you again for those who testified. Thank you, nominees, for accepting and for being here today. Situs Masi. We're, we will now move on to the appointment of Kate Baltazar to Station Manager of the Guam Telecommunications Corporation, KGTF PBS. All right, we have many people signed up in support. I'm going to call those who signed up to give oral testimony Chris, uh, Senator Chris Duenas, Mr. James Gillen, Joanne Brown, Senator Joanne Brown, Rosemary Clement and Sa uh, Senator Sam Mabini. Those who've, who've um, signed up in support are Lorraine Hernandez, Bertha Galimba, Vicky Menglotnia, Bella Duckenai, is it Jerome Kanata, Michael Lizama, 
Thank you all for signing up in support, and thank you all for being here for this confirmation hearing. You have a, a panel stacked with former senators, <laughs> so I'm going to begin on the one side. <laughs> Senator Lamarena, please begin. I want to thank you for your patience also today. I know we were hoping to be here earlier, but thank you very much. Mr. Lamarena. Thank you, Vice Speaker, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Tony Lamarena. I'm here to testify in favor of the confirmation of Kate Baltazar to be the general manager of PBS. Uh, two years ago, if you asked me who Kate Baltazar was, I'd say, I don't know. But in the last year and a half, I've had a, the wonderful experience of working with her at my side at the Department of Corrections. Uh, and, and the many amazing things that have happened at DOC since then. Although what we see in the media may be the negative side of it, but uh, what we have done in regards to rehabilitation programs uh, has gone way beyond, I think, what DOC has done in many, many years. And a lot of that is the result of Kate Baltazar. With her background with grants and in, in, in services and in casework, uh, she was able to bring in programs that, that we could only dream of happening at, at DOC. Uh, she, was, she was the driver of women's programs in DOC. Uh, there was one program, I, uh, the pizza pop, what, pizza? Fauna Rising, and then there was, what was again the Pizza Pop and uh, Power Tools. Pizza Pop and Power and, Tools. And th you know these these are programs that uh, gear toward primarily the the female inmates at DOC and, and teaching them trades and teaching them to to be more uh, confident of themselves. And so she brought uh, a lot of programs to uh, the Department of Corrections. So. I think, you know, you move from one program to another program, now you're at PBS, but it's still a program. And with her uh, background in, in grants writing and grants management, I think it again brings new horizons to PBS. Um, I mean, I could, you know, I was telling her earlier today, I said, I can talk about your, your uh, qualifications that one, you can, uh, you know how to do a pat down. Uh, Two, you know how to do a shakedown. Uh, but I don't think, you know, she'll need the, those talents and uh, skills at PBS. But, uh, you know, the reality is I think uh, her becoming the general manager of PBS will bring uh, a new vision uh, to, to the department. Uh, we, we discussed it earlier about local programming. I think probably that's one of the, the, the in things that we really need to start concentrating back at PBS is, is local programming uh, because it, it, it makes us reinvent ourselves and, and makes us realize how unique life here on Guam is. And, and I congratulate her on her appointment and uh, we'll greatly miss her at DOC. I'd wish I'd had her back, but you know, she's moved on to other things and greater things and I know she'll do very well. It's, it's, it's sad that you know she's only got a few more months left, but I I I, I know she'll do many great things in those sh few short months. So, Madam Chair, I support her confirmation. Thank you very much, Senator Lamarin. Senator Duenas. Alpha day once again, Madam Chair. And um, before I go on with Kate, I wanted to just for the committee's purpose, I miss Steve Guerrero and just uh, speak in favor as well, or just say that I'm in favor of his nomination. Good man and good for that board. You know, I, I'm here today, once again, I'm Chris Duenas, um, in support of Kate. I thought of my three things and I actually wrote them down because they were important to me. My first was, and then it didn't become my first because it's just the fact that everybody loves Kate. <laughs> She's a sweet, sweet person. And um, 15 years ago uh, or so is, is when I was introduced and, and got to meet Kate in her world of helping with nonprofits and and different um, uh, children's programs as well. I was the director of DYA and I was just so impressed, um, not only by her personality and her demeanor, but just the fact that um, going into my second point, as I got to know her and watch her um, through different forums with nonprofits and in the 
uh, in the world of, of different um, uh, realms of, of, of government, particularly in different seats of government, this august body as well as in the executive branch. And it didn't matter whether she was you know, working with or speaking to Democrats or Republicans or, or, or just different folks in different areas um, in the business community. She just got along so well with others and worked well with others. And I think that's the kind of thing that PBS and any organization really needs is somebody who, who really is, 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 not, uh, is very genuine in their approach and is not, uh, doesn't take a hard line on, on, on positions if they differ either party-wise or, or, or their politics or, or just their personal you know, perspective. And Kate is just the kind of person who will work with anyone. And I think that is a quality not only that PBS needs, but uh, just in general in management. Finally, in wrapping up, one thing I've seen in Kate, no matter what she approaches or what she has to deal with, she's extremely determined. And I think that is also just an amazing quality and a quality that's so important uh, for a manager and anybody in management. As my good uh, colleague, Senator Lamarina said, there are only a few months left in this administration going forward. We don't know what kind of transition it will be and what would be required for that transition given the candidates that are running for office. But the fact of the matter is the transition is important. So not only as she moves forward and, and finalizes the programs that she's working on now, maybe has a chance to introduce some new stuff, but the fact of the matter is she will be in charge of handing over the reins or maybe continuing the reins uh, there at PBS, uh, depending on you know, the, the selection of the, of the next chief executive. But the fact of the matter is there will be a transition and I think it's important to have a confirmed member sitting in that chair to be able to wrap things up and move things forward uh, or continue, uh, whatever is, is, is the result. So uh, I, I humbly ask, Madam Chair, that you consider this nomination favorably, uh, put her to the floor, have her voted, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I pray that the rest of the body will see what we see here and the qualities that Kate has and that she be confirmed as uh, the administrator, uh, director, or whatever they call that, PBS. So uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to testify in, in full favor of Kate. Thank you very much, Senator Duenas. Senator Brown. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Certainly is a pleasure. It always, isn't always a pleasure coming down here, but I could say today <laughs> was a pleasure uh, to come down and testify in, in favor of Kate uh, Baltazar's appointment to PBS. Certainly back in the days when we were growing up, it was always KGTF, and we watched Sesame Street and Zoom and a whole bunch of other programs. Now I watch Masterpiece Theater. Uh, now that I'm getting a little older, but I, I think a lot has to be said for young people that know how to do heavy lifting. It's a skill set that not everybody has. Uh, not everyone has the potential to develop to their full capability. And I think in the case of Kate Baltazar, uh, she has that potential. Not only has she demonstrated that, because certainly in the time I've known her, I've always known her to be very positive. Uh, she still has that twinkle in her eye. I think we all remember back in the day, we used to have a twinkle in her eye too. <laughs> <laughs> now we're kind of glazed over in frustration. <laughs> but to still have that and to have uh, as outgoing, as, as relayed by my colleagues here, uh, outgoing personality that she has and yet the ability to, to grasp information and understand how to manage and administrate, how do you take things to the next level? Not everybody has that capability to do the heavy lifting. Uh, and I still see her as, as in development, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I, I look forward to the years ahead uh, Whatever her future ambitions are, I'm going to be keeping my eye on her because I, I think she's going to go on to bigger and better things. Uh, and certainly the initiative that uh, Senator LaMorena talked about and Senator Chris here talked about, she does have that. I think uh, uh, PBS will be in very good hands with, with her uh, involved, just her energy, her enthusiasm, her knowledge, her capabilities, her ability to bridge, and at the end of the day, actually deliver a product. Uh, we don't spend a lot of time in government building. Uh, we spend a lot of time tearing down. We can sometimes spend a little too much time attacking, but the ability to go in and take an operation and build upon it and make it better at the end of the day and expand the capabilities, uh, you know, that takes some real skill sets. And I know she's, she's, she has that, and she'll continue to build upon that, and we will continue to watch her continued success. So we certainly, I'm here to uh, extend my full support and hope that the members of your committee and the legislature uh, confirm her, irregardless of the time. I mean, be it three days, five weeks, five months, eight years, whatever the case may be. Uh, I think it's important to ensure that these these operations, even though people think, you know, PBS is just, oh, that's, you know, that's the frosting on the cake and not really substantive to this community. 
Uh, it's always been there for so many years and, and a lot of the support over the years from the community to help keep it operating. I agree she's going to be able to look for other resources and funding resources to strengthen the operations of PBS because uh, there's a lot of people, young people, all of us when we grew up on Guam where there were two channels, channel 12 and channel 8 uh, before cable came along for those of us that are old enough. Uh, had a real impact on our lives, and I'm sure with who she is, uh, she'll continue to do great things there. So I certainly testify in favor of her confirmation. Thank you very much, Senator Brown. And the pleasure is mutual. Um, all right, Mr. Gillum? Oh, I'm sorry, Senator Mabini, if I may call her first, please. Yes. Thank you, Vice Speaker, Madam Chair. Um, I'm here again to testify in favor of Ms. Kate Baltazar for her confirmation for the position of general manager at PBS Guam. Um, let me start off with talk uh, about, about um, Kate. I, I find her to be, and like my previous, um, the previous speakers had shared, extremely personable, which I think in this kind of position is very important by virtue of its, um, its position in when it comes to education and, uh, the, pers and the public of which it serves. Um, I one of the things that I found uh, with Kate, other than being very personable, is her extreme professionalism and being very sharp and her willingness to, re to learn. Um, stepping into uh, the, the realm of public television, um, it's not something that, that uh, we, we go to school and we think that you know, we would get trained in. We, get, we, we learn about it. And fortunately for individuals like her, myself, and many at the table, we've learned about it throughout our lives by watching Sesame Street or whatnot. But getting to the background and being able to get in there and learn and be able to run a ship like that. I know with her skill sets, with, her, with what she brings to the table, she'll be able to do that. Um, Senator Lamarena had um, uh, shared and testified to, uh, uh, provide a testimony about her abilities to, to be able to, to hit the ground running with, any, with an organization like Department of Corrections. Um, the other thing I think I find in her that is extremely important in this position, and I'm going to speak, and I, forgive me, I, didn't, I, I failed to mention this earlier, that um, in late, gosh, I can't remember, that was at 2008, 2009, 2010, I was once the general manager of uh, then KGTF, then we transitioned it to PBS Guam to, fought to, to brand it with a nation. So in that position, I've learned certain personality traits and maybe certain skill sets that would be needed that she possesses. That willingness to learn, the desire to grow. Uh, Kate Balthazar has, has proven that to me and has, proven, I believe, proven it to the public as well. Um, I believe the four areas that I think um, are uh, important roles that she's going to have to take when, um, when she gets into the organization um, are areas like the administrative side of the house, being able to manage public funds or write for grants or respond to grant responsibilities. I, I know that she has that background. She has proven that she, and, and I've spoken to many people who have worked with her and have attested to her, her abilities. Um, so she brings that to the table. The back side of it is, um, deals with what um, the previous senators have also shared as far as the need to develop local production or to be creative and look for different ways to build that side of the house. Um, uh, the other side is also her ability to be able to grasp technical, technical, uh, the technicalities um, required of the job. One thing that I don't know if it's still true, maybe, maybe she or her colleagues can confirm, there's still many people who may not be able to access maybe digital television right now, and so some of them may, may still have to um, access public television. Um, we tend to forget that uh, we tend to forget that public television is part of that educational piece and her passion, her, her social service background, her, her passion for education, she brings to the table as well that can inform um, and help improve and grow the, the organization, I believe. And last but not least, there is the important role of fundraising. Uh, the, 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 t the TV station um, needs development or rather um, the ability to raise funds to support new programs or existing programs. I, I know that she has that skill set to be able to help build that and, and, and uh, build a bigger and better uh, PBS Guam. So I fully endorse her, um, her confirmation. I do ask that you speak with uh, your fellow colleagues to also support her 100%. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Mabini. Mr. Gillen, thank you for your patience. Thank you very much, uh, Senator. Um, my name is James Gillen. I'm a resident of Manila. Um, I've known Kate for, what, four or five years. Um, 
only by her, her work. We don't, we don't spend a lot of time socializing, but um, you know, the quality of her work uh, when she was at the clearinghouse uh, her stamina, because a lot of people don't like to do, at the director level don't like to deal with the clearinghouse, because it means re, you know pulling all of your grants together, getting them over there and get them reviewed. But she stayed on that, you know, just stayed with it, got us all in line, and I think you know did it in such a way that nobody was really griping, you know. And that's always been been a, a function at, at the lieutenant governor's office that really wasn't very popular. You know, but people got to see through her determination that, you know, it was a necessary thing to do, even though it was, at one time we used to think duplicative because we had to go through federal kinds of reviews. So we had, you know, it was kind of strange for us. But uh, to see, she's kind of like a very quality app that you can put on your phone. You know, it, as soon as you download it, it works, you know, and it doesn't matter where, you know, where it is, she works. You put her at DOC, with all of their problems and with a quality guy like Tony, and it works. And not only getting it squared away, but the transparency, the willing to admit that there are problems, you know, rather than hiding things, uh, reaching out for new grants and programs, for, especially for female uh, prisoners. You know, just the, the way she goes about things, you know, she, she beguiles you a little bit, you know, because she's so pleasant. You know, but there's a there's a steel ramrod there. You know that she stays with. You know, that makes you makes you uh, work. And, you know, she has all of those qualities um, that somebody needs, especially in say at PBS, where you're going to have to be asking for money. You're going to be always kind of hand to mouth almost daily. But you know, she has has the ability to bring disparate groups together. You know, just by her personality. But she. She, and she, she's a very quick learner. It doesn't take long for her to hit the ground running. And just by seeing the products of, of what she's done so far, I have no, no hesitancy at all in you know, endorsing her, her appointment to this, to this job. Thank you very much, Mr. Gillen. Ms. Clement? Um, I've known Kate for, I guess, over 20 years. Uh, she, my daughter worked with her. Uh, my daughter worked with her at Varro when my daughter came back from Africa. She was in the Peace Corps. And so I've known her a very long time, uh, but only have worked with her the last few months at PBS, because I'm a board member of PBS, and uh, a lifelong fan of public television. I'm, I'm from New York, where you know, public television has tremendous status. Um, and um, I, I think that Kate hit the ground running uh, when she came and had a lot of great ideas. I think she has a vision, which I totally agree with. And I think she has, from what I've seen in this few months of working with her, she has really good management skills. And um, I mean, she is a lovely person, has a really nice personality. And when it comes to fundraising and things like that, that really counts. Um, uh, you know, a smile gets you more money than a frown. <laughs> and I think she would be great. I, I just feel it's unfortunate that this is a job that's, you know, dependent on politics because one of the problems, I think, is there's been too many changes at PBS. And it's, it's something that needs consistency. And um, I know we had our one of our members, our board president, went to Hawaii and talked to the people there. And of course, I know in, in New York, it has nothing to do with politics. It's a, it's a paid job and doesn't change because I think for public television to really make a difference, especially as far as uh, local programming goes, which is really important, um, it's just a shame that, you know, that there isn't consistency and then it has to change every time there's an election. I hope whoever is the new governor can, I mean, you can possibly keep her on because we need we need someone like her not just for the next few months and uh, and then if you start from ground zero you know it's just really hard to get things going and and to get things accomplished but I ho I wholly support Kate I think she is great and I think she'll she is doing a lot for PBS and I hope that she can continue thank you very much Ms. Clement thank you for your service on the board also um, 
Kate, please. So this Masi, Madam Chair, uh, I just want to thank the, uh, the uh, wonderful individuals. I am flanked by so much greatness here. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I want to uh, also thank my colleagues, my team behind me, and they are literally behind me and my, my backbone. Uh, I want to give special recognition to Lorraine Hernandez, who's here today. She took on the daunting task of uh, dual roles, uh, administrative officer and acting GM. Uh, in the absence of a GM, and um, so I, I know she's very happy this is happening today, right, Lorraine? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. My sincere appreciation to you um, for the opportunity to testify before you here today. Though just a short two and a half months, it has been an honor to serve in an acting capacity as General Manager of PBS Guam KGTF. And I wholeheartedly thank my PBS colleagues who support me each and every day. In these austere times, the question is often raised, does PBS really need a general manager or a station manager? Does PBS need a singular person dedicated to this leadership position? My answer to this is a resounding yes. The time to install capable leadership is now, Madam Chair to ensure that PBS Guam is poised to tackle the challenges of today and propel us into the future, and I am prepared to take on that task. PBS is a private nonprofit corporation funded by the federal government, founded in 1969, whose members, such as PBS Guam, are America's public TV stations, non-commercial, educational licensees that operate 350 PBS member stations and serve all 50 states, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, and American Samoa. PBS offers programming that expands the minds of children, documentaries that open up new worlds, non-commercialized news programs that keep citizens informed on world events and cultures, and programs that expose America and Guam to the worlds of music, theater, dance, and art. It is a multi-platform media organization that serves Americans and Guamanians through television, mobile, and connected devices, the web, in the classroom, and more. PBS is accessible to all, regardless of their ability to subscribe to paid commercial cable services, and is often a child's first classroom, a trusted window into the world. With a mission and responsibility of this magnitude, the question truly is, how can PBS move forward without a dedicated leader such as myself? As PBS Guam stands today, it has nav navigated nearly 50 years the ebbs and flows of leadership, funding, trends in education, and has survived. But what I would like to do, Madam Chair and members of this august body, is set the stage for PBS to do more than survive. Give it the platform to truly grow and thrive. There are many sources of grant funding yet untapped, programs for youth yet to be developed, community members yet to be engaged, young minds yet to be ignited, adult vocational partnerships yet to be forged, for this worthy agency to be allowed to be dormant and left without an executive leader at the helm. Time is of the essence, and there is but a few short months, Madam Vice Speaker. And alongside the national programming, our local cultural programming is an area of great need. Not want, need. We recently launched a local current event show, Colors in Paradise, and I Recognize our producer, Jonathan Rice-Ablon, for his creative mind in springing this show forth, but we need more. Time is of the essence to record oral readings of our language in poetry and song, promote childhood literacy in Chamorro language reading circles on TV, record for posterity shows that I have proposed, like Life in the Village, a 19-part series that documents the people, uniqueness, and pride of each of our villages. Talk to me. You know, since our time uh, many years ago in my social work and, uh, and uh, Fats and Fabalan days, um, this is a talk show idea, a collaborative effort um, I received as an idea from a concerned citizen who, like I, 
understands the need to have a local platform to discuss and present visually on TV the issues that plague our island people today. Homelessness, poverty, suicide, and drugs, to name it for you. There is no platform locally where this is consistently being discussed and solutions are being searched for, Madam Speaker, by Speaker. These shows are a great addition to the programs our island children watch, along with the supporting work and art of local producers. If given this opportunity, Madam Chair, I will put forth a plan that will long outlive my tenure as general manager, one that includes updated standard operating procedures, rubrics for ensuring local programming is priority programming, board development to invest in the training of those who govern our agency, and a strategic plan, a living working roadmap for the next three to five years to spur and manage growth. I like this quote. Um, I just wanted to close. Uh, it's by General Douglas MacArthur. A true leader has the confidence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions, and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. He does not set out to be a leader, but becomes one by the quality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. So this is Maasi, Madam Chair, and I'm subject to any questions you may have today. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciated your testimony. I think you hit the nail on the head with many of the things that have been, I'm thinking about with, with this um, entity and I don't know if you watched that we had a debate during the budget on PBS and yes, uh, just like some of the senators here, uh, some of the senators on the floor were very nostalgic and very <laughs> came to PBS's defense uh, as ne necessary uh, for the people of Guam at this time. And so, and I agree that leadership is really going to be key. You've got to def You've got to um, lead all of us in, in recognizing the importance of, of everything that is done there. And I, I thank all of you who highlighted all the very good work that is done there. And thank you to the staff for being here and Ms. Lorraine for holding, holding it down all this time. I, I've heard many great things about the work that you, you have all done. But um, Kate, yeah, I, I agree with everybody who has testified that uh, I'm familiar with your skills, maybe not even all of them, and I'm, I'm very confident that uh, it's kind of amazing that what a place for you to use all of your skills and experience and really grow and lead us all. I, I think it's a, it's a very good opportunity for all of us to see really the, the potential, right, of this place that's been... Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to your plans. And um, I want to apologize that your nomination took so long to have a hearing. It, it was really an oversight. And I received the nomination on August 6th. So I set it to the media right away for the public notice. And, and so um, it was just unfortunate. But, um, but I want to thank you for agreeing to do this work. and. Uh, I love the fact that you are willing to set it, set it up, regardless of what happens in January, <laughs> that you're willing to set it up for, to grow and for all of us for the future. So thank you very much for that. And thank you all for your testimony. I very much appreciate all you senators coming down here and testifying and Director Gillum and, and the board members and the staff. I very much appreciate you being here. Sisus Masi, good luck, and let me know if there's anything that we can do to help PBS. Uh, we're, we're ready. Sisus Masi, Madam Vice Speaker. Agumas, good luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Thank you again, everyone. Um, we're going to proceed with the hearing. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. Thank you again uh, for your patience, everyone. We're going to proceed with the uh, hearing on the appointments of Michael McKeel as architect representative of the Guam Historic Preservation Review Board and the appointment of Polly Eric Forbes as history representative of the Guam Historic Preservation Review Board. If you could please come to the front and have a seat. And I'm go going to read off uh, the names of some of the people who have signed up to testify on your, on your behalf. Mr. Joe Kanata from the Guam Preservation Trust. Mr. David Lotz, another um, board member, thank you. Victor Camacho, no, Mr. Tom Camacho. You can have a seat if you'd like. And um, All right, the others who have signed up in support of your nominations, but not to present oral testimony are Lawrence Borja, Charmaine Udissima, Ruby Santis, Jolie Liston, Andrew Tenorio, Victor Camacho. Thank you. Thank you again for your patience. Um, I didn't expect it to go that long on the earlier he hearing, so thank you again. Um, all right, so we're talking about the Guam Historic Preservation Review Board. And for the public who's listening, I'd just like to review just very briefly what, what this board is all about. There are five members. And they each come with a different background, different expertise and that, they, that they bring to this board. Um, they are supposed to, it's the duty of the board to enter historic properties into the Guam Register of Historic Places. Oh no. Yes. Evaluate applications for nominating properties to the National Register of Historical Places. Review the Guam survey of the Guam Historic Properties. Review the content of the Comprehensive Preservation Plan established. Serve as the Board of Directors of the Guam Preservation Trust Fund serve as the State Historic Review Board for purposes related to the National Historic Preservation Act. We'll now accept testimony on behalf of these nominees, and you've all signed up in support of both. So if you don't mind, we're going to combine these hearings together. And um, um, Ms. Mr. Joe Kanata, if you could please proceed. Good afternoon, Vice Speaker, uh, Madam Chair. I would like to read uh, our written testimony. Uh, again, Hafadeh Vice Speaker Talahi, on behalf of the staff of the Guam Preservation Trust, I write to express our support for Mr. Michael McKeel and Polly Eric Forbes's nomination to the Guam Historic Review Board, representing architecture and history disciplines, respectively. As you're well aware, the GR, GHRB, the the Guam Historic Review Board members in turn become the board of directors for the Guam Preservation Trust and a complete board allows for better management of GPT to continue our work to advance historic preservation in our community. Through their professional work, it is evidence that Mr. McKeel and Polly Eric display an immense passion for historic preservation with institutional knowledge gained from various sectors of our local preservation community. Mr. McKeel and Polly Eric have brought forward sound policy guidance and support for projects and programs that have increased community awareness of historic preservation on Guam. Indeed, 
With our island experience and impending economic and social change with the Guam buildup, it is necessary that the Guam Historic Review Board and GPT Board maintain the institutional knowledge to ensure that historic preservation policies and guidance are properly implemented. Both Mr. McKeel and Paula Eric have been part of many discussions surrounding current and present preservation matters our island community faces, and I am confident that together they will continue to complement the expertise of the full GHRB and GPT board. Additionally, I strongly believe that they will continue to work well with the Guam Historic Resource Division and ensure that historic and cultural resources remain protected as both has done for so many years. In closing, it is most crucial that GPT have a complete board to ensure that GPT's fiduciary responsibilities and mandates are met. And in this regard, I once again extend my support of Mr. McKeel and Polly Eric Forbes' confirmation to the GHRB and request for your and the committee's favorable consideration. Sisus Masi. Sisus Masi. Mr. Camacho. Thank you, Senator Terlahi, um, Chairperson. Um, I would just like to read my uh, testimony in, in full support of uh, Michael McKeel. And then I don't have one for Father Eric, but I'd like to express um, just some oral uh, support for him also. Have a day, Senator uh, Terlahi. I am in full support of Michael McKeel as the Arch architect representative of the Guam Historic Preservation Review Board. I have worked with Michael for over 30 years and know him to be one of the best architects, architects on island with a great sensitivity to Guam's culture. He is a strong proponent of the preservation of Guam's history, particularly in its landscape, buildings, and in its culture. I know that Michael has served for many years as chairman of the Guam Preservation Trust and has been extremely instrumental in moving projects forward. I had the honor of meeting you uh, at one of these projects in Inoran, the restoration of the Lujan residence, which was a wonderful project as expressed by Mayor Doris uh, F. Lujan during the dedication ceremony. The Flores residence was also a project recently completed months earlier and shows the outstanding work that the Guam Preservation Trust and their board continues to do. Other noteworthy projects that Michael has been instrumental in moving forward include the uh, historic Lujan House, historic Chargloff House, historic Walking Trail, Plaza de Susana, and the Palacio, among many others. We need good and dedicated individuals to continue this work, and Michael is, ex is certainly one of these passionate individuals who is at the forefront of historic preservation. I know Michael to be critical of funds expended and will not tolerate waste. He is such an asset to the community and has my full endorsement for the position as architect representative of the Guam Historic Preservation Review Board. Um, and um, I'd also like to uh, offer my full support also for Polly Eric. I know that he's been involved uh, in, in Guam's history and I've attended uh, some of his presentations uh, on genealogy, and uh, I've had the pleasure of listening to him in, listening to him in mass, and uh, him also sharing, you know, some of Guam's history uh, on the religious um, forefront also. So, uh, in closing, I'd, I'd like to just say I, I fully endorse the um, the the two candidates in front of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kamacho. Mr. Lotz. Thank you, uh, Vice Speaker. I, I am here to offer oral testimony in support of the appointment, or actually reappointment, of Mr. Michael McHale and Pollock Eric Forbes, who have uh, performed excellently representing architecture and history for the um, board, which is, I believe you've mentioned, actually serves two different functions. And uh, we've seen considerable progress, fundamental progress in preserving and restoring uh, the island's heritage and cultural resources. 
uh, with their efforts. And I, I think that is probably as good a summary as I could come up with, so I, I certainly recommend that they be approved. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lotz. Um, how long have you been a board member? That gets complicated. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm on my second consecutive term, which ends in 2020, so that goes back to 12. And the complication is I had previously been appointed, and that date escapes me, but due to a serious potential conflict of interest, I don't think that appointment was ever went through because I, I was working for the for Anderson Air Force Base, and, and the conflict of interest was, uh, that was an agency of the Department of Defense, and Guam Preservation Trust, which was good, was taking Department of Defense to court. So obviously I had an obvious conflict of interest. So obviously I think most people know I uh, really favored the efforts of Preservation Trust. Thank you very much, Mr. Lotz. Um, I, um, all right, so now we'll hear from Polly Eric, or, or Mr. McKeel. I'm sorry, Polly Eric, please go for it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm very happy to continue my service uh, on this board. It's uh, uh, an opportunity that I take great pleasure in because of my personal commitment to all things Chamorro culture and history. Uh, I've served multiple terms as well, and uh, when by force of circumstance I couldn't serve, I was off island for several years, I felt the absence uh, not being able to make a contribution to this great effort because although I do this and that in other ways to help the uh, preservation of our culture and language, um, at GPT we work with very tangible things, uh, very um, concrete reminders of uh, our history and uh, you can just drive all over the island to the south to this uh, capital city to the building we're in right now and you can be in touch with our history. And so it's, it's a very satisfying uh, mission to be involved in. And we have a great uh, board. I respect all the members of the board. We work very well together. Uh, we enjoy meeting and we have a great staff. Um, I'm so proud of our staff. And I would like to contribute uh, some more, uh, especially with uh, some new projects that are coming along and also uh, keeping our eye on preservation issues vis-a-vis uh, -vis the military expansion. Polly, Eric, how long have you served on the board? I was appointed sometime in the early 2000s, and then from 2009 to 12, I wasn't able to serve. I was in the States, and then I uh, was reappointed, I believe, late 2015. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for your service on the board and for accepting this nomination. And um, I have a couple questions that sure. I'd like to ask, if you don't mind, just to put on the record. Um, do you have any continuing business interests that may be a conflict of interest for you if confirmed as a member of this board? I'm asking this because this board manages a, a large trust in comparison to the, some of the other boards that come through here. I just want to... I don't even file income tax, <laughs> Madam Chair. I make zero cents a year. All right. I'm just putting this on the record, Polly. <laughs> Are there any potential conflicts of interest that may affect your ability to serve in this position? Uh, not unless something touches the Capuchin Friary, which I don't think will ever happen, no. All right. Yeah. Are, um, what are your priorities for the upcoming term? You're, you're appointed to a term of four years until yes. 2022. Yes, well, like I mentioned, I really have my eye, the whole board has our eye on the military expansion, and uh, it's, you know, we don't live in a perfect world, but I think we're doing pretty good in at least establishing a working relationship with the military to agree to some kind of... Uh, uh, an educational representation of perhaps like laddie sites that had to be removed. Um, at least they have agreed that the, the laddie stones won't be tossed into the sea or lost somewhere. 
uh, but will be preserved somewhere and that there be some kind of an educational representation of the, these laddie stones. So that's one big priority. And uh, another new project that's coming up that we're working on that uh, I think has great potential is Atantano. I'm very excited about that. All right, thank you. Do you think um, the board is doing enough or it could do more in regards to protecting ancient sites in place? Well, I'm sure we can always do more, uh, but I think we're doing a good job uh, and uh, it's certainly something that is at the forefront of our discussions almost every single meeting. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. McKeough? Um, there's an old saying that if you want to look smart, stand near intelligent people and don't say much. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I want to start out by saying that I am almost um, a fanboy when it comes to Polly Eric and his outreach and his blog. And I just showed Joe a few minutes ago. Um, on my email, it's just all Polaric, Polaric, Polaric. And it's, it's great to me that he reaches out in all these different venues and he's, he's able to make Guam's history accessible in so many different ways. And it's such a personal message that he attaches to everything. And there's accuracy to it and there's... Uh, it's just a very intelligent way of, of portraying our history and he's able to infuse the perspectives of, of the people of Guam into that history, which I think is a, it's a, a rare talent. It's not something that a lot of people can do, but he does it so well and I think it's just become, it's made history popular, Guam's history, it's made it popular um, you know, for a lot of young folks out there who just follow his blogs you know, religiously. <laughs> um, so, um, very happy to see that um, he, you know, he was nominated for reappointment. Um, so, Vice Speaker and Madam Chair, for myself, I think um, going. I want to go directly to the question that you were asked earlier about. You know, are we doing enough? I think that it took a while to understand the process that we were all in and then to understand the challenges that the different um, entities that advocate for historic preservation to understand what their abilities, opportunities, limitations were. And I think that in large part due to your own um, um, involvement with this process, there's more clarity about where that is. And so I think we can see better how we can interact with that process and try to advocate or increase the advocacy for historic preservation. Um, I, I think that, Polly, as Polly Eric um, alluded, now with that understanding in place, I think that um, the board members are able to re more clearly visualize how to interact um, how to be more aggressive, how to verbalize, how to communicate with, with the different parties that are involved with this. So um, I think that we're, we're becoming more uh, ambitious or assertive about how that interaction is going to happen. Um, and I think because the group is very process and organizationally oriented, I mean, we want to make sure that it's it's productive and it's got benchmarks and metrics for success or failure so that we know that we can move forward. Um, so I, I definitely think that you're going to see that advocacy come kind of to a level that you haven't seen in the past. But I also feel that, um, again, the community, the stakeholder groups that are involved in it are in a much better position to understand uh, how the federal regulations work and what the impacts are of a lot of these um, activities that are being proposed. So I'm anticipating uh, a more assertive or a more aggressive approach moving forward. I mean, we're always going to be pushing for the next level up. So um, aside from that, I think the other programs, we're really proud of the outreach and, and the programs that are there to essentially replace us, trying to get the next generation and get them educated. Um, you're familiar with the Youth Summit program, so we've had that for a couple of years now, and that brings uh, uh, youth from 
all the different islands together, and it really shows them what kind of professions there are, what the opportunities are, and what it is that they can be fighting for. Um, lays all that out for them in a way that they can actually see a path towards a career or a lifelong stakeholder position. Uh, so that's something that we're really proud of. Um, and again, bringing the right people into, uh, bringing them to interact in a way that it really it tr it benefits the community as a whole. Uh, we're doing great planning work now with the village of, of Umatic. Um, and the previous planning work that had been done with the village of Inarahan has really resulted in a lot of physical rest restoration work. Um, and we're going to start to see those um, programs um, evolve into opportunities for the, the village residents to embrace historic preservation, but also as a, a means of living, making a living through with historic preservation and showcasing history in those specific villages. So that's something that's, that's really, I think we're all very proud of that. So. Thank you very much. How long have you served on this board, may I ask? I think I came in around the same time as Polly Eric. So he, there was a gap in his service. There hasn't been a gap in my service. So I think it was about- 2000? 2000. That's a yeah. long time. I know. Yeah. I think I remember you there as long as I can remember. So <laughs> that's uh, I've become historic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're. But uh, if I could just ask you the same question, so we have it on the record. Do you have any continuing business interests that may be a conflict of interest for you if confirmed as a member of the board? No. In, in fact, um, my firm has specifically stayed away from projects where there's going to be an interaction, and where my involvement or reputation with historic preservation might. Um, uh, even appear to present an unlevel playing field. Yeah. So. And um, thank you for answering the other questions with your testimony. Um, if we could chat just, um, there was something you said I wanted to ask you about. Well, I, I do want to say that I appreciate all the work that you've all done, and uh, I, I'm impressed by it. There's a lot of stuff going on, and I think the community can see that, so I'm very happy about that. I'm happy about... Uh, many of the priorities and, and the outreach, like you explained. I'm, I'm very also, I, this is a, not the board's work, but it's Polly Eric's individual work. And I want to say that it's, uh, it is what you say it is. It's, it's accessible. It's made history very relevant to different generations, which I very much appreciate because in families, it's, uh, you, you've tied it into families, different generations, and you, you make them see how it's very relevant to, to what we're doing today. And uh, I appreciate that and, and the time that you must take to put into all of that and keep, and all of you to keep yourselves up to date on how things are being done nowadays. I know we've got a very excellent staff, uh, but I know it takes a lot of your own work and that if we wanna move ahead and be ahead of the game, which is, a, which is hard, I think. This is a game that uh, we don't have, you know, the huge, uh, bureaucracy dedicated to it like they do in the Department of Defense and in many other areas and so we are uh, a lot of times playing catch-up but I appreciate your efforts to to do many of the things that you have done to engage them more to be uh, more aware uh, me I I, I want to push the board more for this uh, I feel like there's a there's certain opportunities we just can't um, get later. They're only presented to us once, right? And that is these ancient villages to be preserved as they are in place, and not moved around, not, not destroyed. I mean, those are really, we, the community of Guam, are all relying on you. So we appreciate your best efforts in that regard. And I know that you've done different tactics, like you've said, and you've, you've even recently hired counsel to, to more particularly address things like that, and so I appreciate that. But I do pr appreciate the composition of the board also being, uh, it looks like a good blend of, of um, by law, different skills, but also just, uh, you know, that we said it earlier in regards to another hearing, but it was that, that love and dedication that is necessary to bring just skills and knowledge to a whole other level of, you know, passion dedication and and really inspiring the, the people that you are working with so just want to thank you I would like to bring the board in and um, 
sometime soon to just inform the public a little more maybe about certain aspects of your programs. I know we tried to do it before and there were just so many things that the, this board is handling so we can't do all of it in one hearing but I just like to uh, let you and the public know that I think they could benefit to hear it again uh, more and more what the work that you are doing and, and how they can participate and have input into that. So for now, I'm going to um, I'm going to call this hearing on these nominations, and, and you have my support, and I want to thank you again for your service. I want to say that if um, we've also received prior to this hearing testimony from Jack B. Jones, Vic Rages, Abner Mariano, Nicole Rages Kelly, Mark Ruth, Dave Lotz, oh Joe Can oh, Joe Canata but uh, in support of these nominations. All right, there being no additional of in individuals to present for the testimony on these confirmations, this committee will continue to remain open until August 19 for acceptance of any additional information or public testimony on the agenda items discussed today. You may submit testimonies to my office directly here at the Guam Congress building or to the mail room or through through email at senatorterlahiguam at gmail.com. I want to thank again everyone for being here and thank you for your dedication. Sizuas Masi. Time is 5 12. Mm -hmm.